This is the second video on Nyquist. Here the focus is on how you might sketch starting from gain and phase information. So the first video introduced the definition of a Nyquist diagram, that is a plot of frequency response as a complex function in the complex plane. However, it was clear that this was somewhat tedious. So what we're going to do now is ask if we can form the sketch a bit more quickly by using gain and phase information. Later in the series on Nyquist, we'll switch the focus back to feedback loop analysis and design. First then, let's look at what we mean by phase of a complex numbers. So viewers need to have a good understanding of quadrants and angles in the complex plane. So here we go. Let's start with quadrant one. Quadrant one is this box here. And you'll see the positive real axis has an argument of zero degrees and the positive imaginary axis has an argument of 90 degrees. So anything between 0 and 90 degrees is considered as quadrant one. Quadrant two takes you from 90 to 180 degrees. So perhaps if I use a different color, quadrant two is this box in here. Now, you'll notice the little caveat is it could also be considered as minus 180 to minus 270. So we've written 180, but we could have written minus 180 degrees. And similarly for this 90 degrees up here, we could have said, no, it's not 90, it's minus 270. The two are in fact equivalent. Quadrant three is this one down the bottom. And I'll just see if I can use a different color if it will let me. So this is quadrant three down here and you'll see this takes you down to the minus 90 degrees or you might call it plus 270. Okay and finally you've got this quadrant down at the bottom. Quadrant 4 which takes you from 270 to minus 360 or from naught to minus 90. Now, what about the modulus of a complex number? Viewers need to have a good understanding of modulus as well, sometimes denoted gain. And this is the distance from the origin. So here you see I've drawn a circle. And clearly, if the circle is centered at the origin, then every point on the circle is an equal distance from the origin. So we see I've denoted an arrow in one direction that has a distance here of one, and an hour in another direction, but they both have the same distance or the same modulus or gain. I could draw a bigger circle. Here it is. And again, if I draw arrows to points on this circle, those arrows have the same length. So in other words, what we're saying is that if you have a point here or a point here, they have the same modulus or the same gain. And of course, I could do the same thing for an even bigger circle. I could draw a point here, I could draw a point here, I could draw a point here, and all these points have the same modulus or gain. Now, what you need to be able to do as a student, you need to be fluent with translating gain and phase representations of complex numbers into an Argan diagram. So the Argan diagram clearly uses real and imaginary, or Cartesian, you might say. But you may be given the complex number in a gain phase representation. So can you easily move between the two? So let's do this one at a time. We'll start with two arg 30 degrees. So the first thing I might do is say, oh, well, 30 degrees is something along that line there. I need to go a modulus of two. So that's going to take me to about here. Now, remember, we're doing estimation and sketching here. Nobody's asking you to use a ruler and be exactly correct. What about 0.6 arg 240 degrees. Well, 240 degrees is going to be this sort of direction down here with the red line. So with a distance of 0 0.6, that'll be something like there. What about 1.2 arg minus 120? Now, minus 120 is in fact the same as plus 240. So I can use this red line and it's just double the magnitude. Now, if we go back, to red again and let's look two and a half arc 135 well 135 is going to be this 
direction here and I want a distance of 2.5 so I'm not going to measure it precisely it's going to be out there somewhere 0.4 arg 150 well arg 150 is going to be something like that and obviously 0.4 isn't going to take you very far it'll be somewhere around there 1 arg minus 30 well if you want to do an argument of minus 30 that's actually going to be the mirror image of 150 and if you want a distance of 1 it's going to be about there so hopefully you've got the idea you need to be able to take this gain phase information and very quickly look on an argon diagram and say roughly where that complex number will be plotted so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this sort of insight to sketch the Nyquist diagram for g equals s plus 2 over s plus 1 squared. And what we've done is we've given you, you'll see it here, we've given you all the gain and phase information. So I'm going to start, perhaps I could do omega equals 0 because that's by inspection. I'm going to start at a point 2. That's omega equals 0. Now, at omega equals 0 0.1, the gain is 1.98 the phase is minus 9 so you're going to see that's about here okay at omega equals 0 0.5 the gain is 1.65 the phase is about minus 39 so that's going to be around here at omega equals 1 you've got 1.12 and minus 63 so we're going to be coming in somewhere like this now I know I haven't got any grid lines or anything on this because the idea is to show you how you can get a feel for the shape using very crude approximation. If you want it to be exact, you're going to get a computer out or use graph paper and a ruler. So now if we look at omega equals 0 0.2, 0 0.57 minus 82, so the angle is getting in uh, quite a lot, so we're down there somewhere, and 10, and we equals 10, we've got 0 0.1 and minus 90, so that's going to be, oops, uh, something went wrong there. That's going to be around there. So if I now draw a sketch between these points, you're going to see my curve is something along those lines. Now, what you'll notice is, as with boat, this way of sketching in Nyquist is really not efficient at all. The fact that I had to generate this table, that took quite a long time, and then sketching each point one at a time, and obviously I can be I have small errors there anyway, and then drawing a line between them. Um, it's quite inefficient as a paper and pen exercise. And so while it's useful um, to do two or three, just to clarify your understanding, it's not a long-term um, method that you want to support. So sketching Nyquist, as with Bode, where we developed shortcuts. We want some shortcuts for Nyquist. And the key thing, if you remember, is we're doing sketching, not plotting. So we want to be able to do it quickly. If you really need a plot, you're going to use a computer. So this is the method we're going to propose. Sketch the Bode diagram, and by this we really do mean sketch, and then transcribe the gain and phase information. Now, so a reminder here again, the focus is on sketching, done quickly, not getting a very accurate plot. And the ability to sketch, this is why we're doing it, if you can sketch, it gives you insight and understanding. And it's that insight and understanding which you're going to need when later on we move to control analysis and design. So here's an example. Sketch the Nyquist diagram for this G of S using the technique we've just suggested. So first we're going to sketch the bow diagrams, but the emphasis is on a very crude and quick sketch to begin with. And we can embellish this slightly if we need to at key frequencies, if we find there's some information that we really need. Now you'll also note, I'm going to cheat a bit, my bowed gain diagram is going to be done just in units of gain, not, so if I put here, I'm not going to bother with decibels because I'll just be transcribing to decibels and then back again, and that's wasting time. Just a reminder, if you haven't been through the Bode videos looking at sketching, you may find that helpful before you follow the next slide. So here we go. I'm going to do first a gain sketch for this transfer function. And remember, it's a very crude one. So I'm going to mark my corner frequencies, 1 and 3. You can see there's no integrator. So I've got a flat gain till I get to 1. I'll go down a bit 
and then I'll go down a bit more. And you'll notice there's no scales on this plot at all. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just trying to get an impression of what happens. And the impression I've got here is the gain starts at 2 and then it decreases. Now let's look at the phase plot. Now I can add on my phase asymptotes because that can be quite useful. And the phase asymptotes you'll see I go 0, minus 90, minus 180. And I happen to know that because this is a simple process then I'm going to get minus 90 at the geometric mean of 1 and 3 which is root 3. So if I do my phase plot it's going to do something like this. And again you'll see I've done that very quickly and crudely and there's there's no scales, there's no tick marks, there's no nothing. I'm just trying to get an impression of what's going on. But one thing I can do is I can say well I know the phase at this point it might be useful to work out what the gain is at this point because that gives me something I can put on my sketch to hang the rest of the sketch on and I can do it very quickly. So if I put in omega equals root 3 then what you'll find is the gain is given by 6 over the square root of 4 times 12 which comes out as 6 over 4 root 3 and although I'm not going to calculate it this is going to be something like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Remember, I don't need to be that precise because I'm doing a sketch. So now what I've got to do is transcribe this information on to the Argan diagram. So you remember, I started at 2. And what did I notice? I'll write it here. The gain was always going down. The phase was always going down. Okay, and I had a particular point where I went through, if you remember this axis here is minus 90 degrees and you'll notice I went through there at about this point here. I finished at minus 180 degrees so I've got to approach the origin in this direction here. So I'm approaching the origin from the minus 180 degree direction but definitely in quadrant 3. If you go back and I put them on here what you'll see is this is quadrant 4 and this one down here is quadrant 3. So the phase starts in quadrant 4, moves into quadrant 3, but it never gets into quadrant 2, which is below minus 180 degrees. So I've got the key bits of information I need on my sketch now, so I can basically do a smooth curve going through what I've got here, and there's my Nyquist diagram. Now, that's a crude Nyquist diagram, but I've captured the information I need. The fact the gain is always reducing. If you follow this sketch, and if you look at the gain, and you'll notice that the length of these arrows is always getting shorter. I'm always getting closer to the origin. Similarly, if you look at the phase, look at the angle there, theta, this angle phi, you'll see the phase is also always reducing. So I've captured the key gain phase information. I've used a point here to hang my plot, a point here, and I've used an arrow here. So with all that information together, I'm going to get a reasonable sketch which tells me what's going on. So from that, you can see what the guidelines for quick sketches might be. All right. So we assume you've already got the boat diagrams, and we're going to take the Nyquist diagram from that because we can do it very quickly. So the first thing to notice, if the phase is reducing, which you can see from the bow plot, i.e. if it's becoming more negative, then the plot has to be moving clockwise. If the phase is increasing, then the plot has to be moving anti-clockwise. If the gain is reducing, the plot has to be moving towards the origin. And if the gain is increasing, the plot has to be moving away from the origin. So hopefully those four statements are obvious. All right. So what we're going to do is use some arrows to represent this insight and you'll see how using this, th these four statements and bow diagrams, you will be able to do sketches very, very quickly. So here's an example. We've given you some points and what we're going to do is tell you whether the gain or phase is increasing or decreasing at those points and from that decide where the diagram goes next. So here's the first point. You're told the gain is increasing 
and the phase is increasing. So what I'm going to do is draw some arrows. If the gain is increasing, I've got to be moving away from the origin in that direction. If the phase is increasing, I've got to be moving anti-clockwise. And so what that tells you is the Nyquist diagram is going to be doing something like that red arrow there. It's going to be moving somewhere in between the two. OK, next one. What if the gain is increasing, but the phase is decreasing? So if the gain's increasing, I've got to be moving that way, away from the origin. If the phase is decreasing, we're going clockwise, which is that way. And therefore, my Nyquist diagram is going to be moving somewhere in between there. What about the next one? So I've got the gain decreasing and the phase decreasing. So the gain decreasing, I'm moving towards the origin. The phase decreasing, I'm moving clockwise. So my plot has got to be moving in a direction, something like that. And the final one, gain decreasing, phase increasing. So the gain decreasing, I'm moving towards the origin. Phase increasing, I'm going anti-clockwise. And therefore, my Nyquist diagram is moving something like that. So the conclusions. Frequency response information can be plotted in our Argan diagram, and here's the key thing, by simply transcribing gain and phase information. Now the gain and phase information is readily available in the Bode diagram, which you've probably done first. And thus, an efficient sketching of a Nyquist plot involves first a simple sketch of the Bode diagrams, and then transcribing that using a knowledge of quadrants and trends. And by trends we mean if the phase is increasing it's going anti-clockwise and so on. It might be necessary for the plot to be accurate in the region of the negative real axis, which correlates with the requirements for the Bode diagram sketches. And clearly, therefore, you might need a couple of specific points to hang your Nyquist diagram on.